welcome again to my channel where we discuss the science behind this world of medicine so today we are going to understand and discuss about hyponatremia hyponatremia is low levels of sodium in the blood which is generally below 135 millimoles per liter in blood so when the level of sodium is below 135 millimoles per liter in blood it is called as hyponatremia though this is a medical topic but the relevance stands in the fact that whenever you get a kidney function test which is very commonly done by a lot of people you always see a result on the top which says serum sodium level or blood sodium levels and you are always wondering what this exactly means so serum sodium levels is nothing but it tells you the sodium levels in the blood and when this is below 135 millimoles per liter it is called as hyponatremia it has been found that 22% of the hospitalized patients develop hyponatremia and of late recently it has also been seen that a lot of covid patients have had hyponatremia the exact reason of this hyponatremia in covid patients has not been clarified or is not known but it is assumed there are some reasons related to lung and steroid deficiency in the body now how does a patient of hyponatremia no or what exactly are the symptoms of hyponatremia so a patient or a person who is having hyponatremia may have nausea vomiting dizziness confusion restlessness irritability he may have letharginess weakness headache sometimes he may have confusion and seizures as well which is fits so you can see hyponatremia has all the symptoms manifested by the brain or the spinal cord and a few symptoms due to muscle tissue the reason why this happens is the nerve cells or the brain cells and the muscle cells and other cells in the body generally get swollen up in hyponatremia so when the cells get swollen up they lose their function and that is why the patient has these symptoms now why exactly do these cells in the body get swollen up in hyponatremia the reason is very simple they attract water the cells attract water inside them in case of hyponatremia it's like a concept we call as osmolarity or the osmolar movement of water what this says is that water moves from a low concentration to a higher concentration so what happens is in case of hyponatremia your blood has low concentration of sodium low concentration of solutes but the cells have high concentration of potassium and other minerals so you have body cells and you have blood blood has low concentration plus water cells have high concentration plus water now the water moves from low concentration to higher concentration hence water or the fluids move from blood to the cells of the body and hence the cells of the body get swollen up generally these cells are the nerve cells which causes all the symptoms which i just described now when we talk about hyponatremia we generally describe that into three broad segments the first is hypovolemic hyponatremia the second is euvolemic hyponatremia the third is hypervolemic hyponatremia let us understand briefly what exactly each one of them means so the first is hypovolemic hyponatremia which is wherein the levels of water or fluid in the body decreases along with decrease in the level of sodium in the blood the decrease of sodium in the blood is much much higher than the decrease in water leading to hyponatremia this generally happens in case of excessive diarrhea or loose motions vomiting dehydration sweating and burns these are conditions wherein there is excessive loss of water as well as excessive loss of sodium from the body hypovolemic hyponatremia may also happen in case of some hypertensive of bp medications which are called as diuretics which actually cause loss of water 
and sodium from the body excretion of water and sodium from the body you have excessive urination by taking these drugs so these are called as diuretics and yes these may also cause hypovolemic hyponatremia hypovolemic hyponatremia may also be caused by some kinds of drugs as well as it may be also caused by low salt intake the second is euvolemic hyponatremia in this case what happens is the levels of sodium absolute levels of sodium in body are okay are maintained but the water in the body increases so when water increases sodium remains same it is just like having low concentration of sodium because of increase in water this generally happens in a syndrome which is called as siadh which is syndrome of inappropriate adh secretion it also happens in glucocorticoid deficiency it is also seen in some cases of hypothyroidism in all these three cases what exactly is happening is there is water retention in the body so water is reabsorbed from the kidneys and the sodium levels are remaining the same so when i have 10 sodium particles in 100 ml of water if water is absorbed more i may have 150 ml of water but 10 particles of sodium remain as it is so hence the concentration of sodium reduces so this was euvolemic hyponatremia then the third is hypervolemic hyponatremia in this case what happens is both the levels of water and the level of sodium in the body increases but the level of increase in water is much higher than sodium in this case i must say that it is not the increase of water it is more of water retention in the body along with retention of sodium wherein retention of water is much much higher than the retention of sodium this is generally seen in kidney failure it is seen in heart failure congestive heart failure it is also seen in liver diseases it is seen in a typical kind of kidney disease which is a nephrotic syndrome obviously there are other reasons to it as well but these four are the very common reasons of hypervolemic hyponatremia so you just need to understand that yes hyponatremia has these three broad classifications and these are the conditions in which you may have hyponatremia now how is hyponatremia actually managed if the sodium levels are between 130 and 135 millimoles per liter it is called as mild hyponatremia and generally does not require any attention with the clinician you can just manage it at home by increasing the salt intake so increasing salt intake will bring your sodium levels to a normal levels but be cautious enough that if you are hypertensive avoid taking salts and do consult with your clinical doctor or a practicing doctor or a general physician you are referring to if the levels of sodium are between 120 and 130 this is called as moderate hyponatremia and i would personally advise you to at least bring this to the attention of your treating doctor or a general physician you are regularly referring to the reason is there can be some things that are happening in your body some disease conditions some medicines you may be taking which may be causing this hyponatremia and the doctor would be able to easily evaluate the reason why this hyponatremia is happening and if he wants to take any action against this hyponatremia low levels of sodium below 120 millimoles per liter is considered as severe hyponatremia and this needs to be addressed with the within the hospital settings by a clinician by a doctor because generally or in 100% of the cases you may need salt or a saline water infusion a high concentration saline infusion may be required so friends i hope this video was informative though this topic as i said is medically inclined but you often come to see the levels of sodium in your blood in lot of test reports where you get a kidney function test done and you should know when to address this why to address this what are the causes of hyponatremia or decreased sodium in the blood so friends i hope this video was useful if yes if you like my video please do like share and subscribe and don't forget to watch my next video thank you